Yo, what's going on guys? Jared here. Today I have my undefeated deck profile, which is going to be Centurion. Um, this is a deck that I have been wanting to test because of the new stuff coming out in the next set, and it's going to be legal for uh, Nationals this year, for the US Nationals, of course. So um, this is one of the decks I wanted to test for it. Uh, man, it worked out pretty well. I actually enjoyed this deck more than I was expecting. Um, I am playing a little bit more techie cards. The Super Heavy Engine adds a lot of value, and I'll explain it more in the profile. Um, yeah, as you can, as you guys probably know also, just very quickly, I, um, have been taking a little bit of a slowdown on the content. Um, one, I think Yu-Gi-Oh! has just kind of been unfun for me currently, just because, um, I've, one, been super busy in, like, real life stuff. Uh, two, I am not going to any events until Nationals, so, but really, I don't see a point of, like, I don't have a fire deck anymore, I got rid of it, so it's like, I don't really see a reason to play competitively currently, so I'm just kind of, like, doing a lot of fun stuff right now. Um, and three, uh, video games have been insane. If you play video games, you know how crazy video games have been right now. Um, and I'm just trying to play as much as I can because it's so fun. Um, so yeah, those are just the reasons why I've been like slowly uploading less. So I'm sorry if, uh, if you're looking forward for more stuff that I was uploading, but for now, I'm just taking it, taking a slow, slow roll with stuff. So, um, yeah, just want to get that out of the way. So again, if you, but if you enjoyed this type of content, if you enjoy Centurion, um, please subscribe and leave any suggestions down below. Um, especially for the future, for uh, especially for Nats, if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them in the comments, uh, and for anyone else watching the video in the future. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the profile. Okay, guys, so like I said, this is going to be Centurion profile. Um, for the normal Centurions, I feel like this is like very standard. Um, three of the Primera, three of the Judea, um, one Emeth, three Oath, um, and then three Stand Up, and one Terraforming. Um, this is like extremely standard. Um, I wanted to get in the pilot seat of this deck to kind of understand how to beat it more because I didn't really understand it before this. And this has really helped me in this experience. And shout out to Nick for giving me this list too to really help me out to get a good starting point on it. Obviously, it performed well, so it was really good. And it was really consistent too. I didn't brick at all, um, which I really, really liked. Like I drew cards that would be considered bricks, but like the rest of the hand just worked so well anyway. It didn't even matter. Um, yeah, overall, like these are kind of like your extender plays, right? Is these, uh, these seven... And then uh, these are your, like, normal summons that you have, and this would be the one, like, in-engine brick that the deck has. Um, there's a lot of cool lines that you can do with Emeth that I really, really like. Um, yeah, it, but overall, like, the deck is, like, pretty basic, I would say. There is, obviously, you get rewarded for knowing uh, more Yu-Gi-Oh!, but, um, like, basically, I feel like a lot of people could play the, pick this stuff, could pick up this deck pretty easily and pilot it pretty, like, decently well enough to victory because of um, the extra deck Calamity Lock. But... Um, for the next engine, which helps push through hand traps, which I think is something this deck really needed, because like I said, you have these seven cards that do it, but you also want um, more because there's so many hand traps being played right now. And the best engine that we found for this was the super heavy engine. So um, that being Wakaushi and Bike being the cards that really push through stuff because you are able to get either a Synchro 12, you can make an interruption um, in the form of Baron or Regulus, um, yeah, just like, it's just free. Like you don't, you don't add anything. They can give you so many synchros, um, which is very, very nice. They also can search combo as your starters because you search soul Gaia booster off of big Benki and then overlay the soul Gaia booster and the prodigy for Banshee to be able to search Trudia cause she's a pyro, which is again, so it's like a full starter you do it without normal summon. Um, it's very, very nice. And then you also, so like I said, you have the regulus line to be able to make an interruption, even if you don't have bike. Uh, you can still make an interruption to play around something like um, either Nibiru or any other hand trap, really. Um, some people might even interrupt the Banshee, so you never really know. Some people might interrupt the uh, the search for the Regulus. Just like you've, you're you doing a lot more interactions that people don't really know what your deck's going for yet, so they might be inclined to do something about it. But this is like installation for things like Nibiru, uh, Imperm, Ash, like any hand trap, really. So it's nice to have. I like it a lot. Um, also, the lines with uh, like... Springins in the Sargus, um, especially in the like search Regulus and threaten Zeus, then go like Regulus Zeus. Like even in today's format, that's still like a really strong line that I think is not respected enough in uh, like, current Yu-Gi-Oh. I would say um, just being like board wipe monster like any negate is broken um, in any format. I feel. Uh, moving on to hand traps, obviously this deck has to play hand traps as we are in current Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, three Ash, three Nib. This is like pretty standard. Uh, so for this deck, we can't play Imperm, so we played three copies of Bell. Three copies of Valor and three copies of Ogre and then two copies of Moonlight. So this was a total of 17 hand traps. I think this was a good number. Um, the deck list should be 40, so it works out, you know, well. Obviously, like I said, I can't play other spell cards, so I don't have room for like Talons, Droplets, um, anything like that, Bonfires, etc. 
So using these spots for hand traps very well. Uh, most of these are kind of standard. Uh, these are the not standard ones, I would say. Um, so my local specifically, I played one fire deck today. Um, Ogre was actually okay being able to Ogre certain cards. It's kind of hard to say like, oh, like in the fire deck, you Ogre this card. Uh, you kind of have to see like how they start their turns. Um, cause sometimes it can get really awkward depending on where you over them. Um, also this card over in like an Appaloosa is always good. So again, there's like some variance to this. Um, obviously Bell hitting, um, something like the Flamberg for fire is really solid, but I also played uh, voiceless voice today and using voiceless voice or using Bell against voiceless voice is pretty solid too. That's something like pre-preparations. And I believe the Saphira was the other card you can, pre you can Bell if I remember correctly. Um, so that was like pretty solid. So the, both these cards performed well. They were never like, they never felt like completely dead. The only times that um, hand traps felt dead was Bell, Nib, and Mourner when I played against Flu. That was the only times that they were dead. But luckily I did have uh, like, Ogre and Veiler, uh, so I was able to like Veil with a normal summon, then Ogre the map, and then I was able to play later, so it worked out pretty well. Um, so yeah, it was good. Uh, overall, I liked it. This ratio was fine. 17 hand traps felt good. Um, all the starters felt really nice, like between like Oath, Stand Up, Primera, Trudia, Wakaushi, and Bite. You have like so many starters to play, so um, you know, you're not really, you're not like, it seems like it would be bad because you play like Regulus, Booster, um, like all these like pseudo bricks, but like when the rest of the deck is just like all gas and not, and hand traps, like the only time your hands are bad, if you draw like two to three of these or like four, of course, but like the odds of that happening are so low. So yeah, overall, like I really like the way that this deck performed, um, at least main deck wise, all the ratios like made sense to me and worked. Um, yeah. So going on to the extra deck, two copies of Legatia. Again, this is like pretty standard. Nothing really to say here. Um, Crimson Dragon, uh, Blazar Dragon. I only made this card once. I never, and it like, it wasn't even like used. It was just like a 4,000 beater. So I don't know. It was like fine, I guess. Calamity. Obviously this card just like won games. Like it was nothing it's stupid. This card's dumb. Um, it's all right. So I, I want to preface something. I think this card's dumb, right? This is obviously a very dumb card when it resolves, but at the same time, um, I think this card's less toxic than people, uh, like say it is. Because only field activations, one, is very important. And two, like the whole combo is like really sensitive right now, especially in today's format. Next format, I'll give you less credit. I'll give that argument less credit because it plays around more next format. Um, but right now, I think this card, like this line, is so easy to interrupt that um, I don't know. Like I'm playing like a million extenders to push through it and still be able to get to it. But I think right now, I, um, I think it's like actually kind of balanced. Um, one copy of Baron, um, that's for the Excel Stardust to go with the bike to be able to make Baron. Um, so you can make an interruption and then, uh, tilting entrainment so that you can do, uh, Wakaushi, Gaia to summon back to Wakaushi. And then you can go into a 12 synchro off of that, either Crimson Dragon or Legatia so that you can, you know, still do combo, uh, which I really liked. Uh, I think I made tilting once that was pretty solid. Um, so that's it for the synchro monsters right now. Again, this is going to change next set, but for now this was working pretty decently. Uh, for the Exceeds, I think this world was like kind of like nice. I really like this lineup. Uh, was Banshee, again, super heavy turning into Banshee. It's Arch Trudia without normal summon. Uh, very good. Um, one copy of Merrymaker, Sargus to be able to get the, again, Therion King Regulus, um, Zeus, and Typhon. Uh, I think all of these came up. I don't think maybe Typhon then, but Typhon never came up. These all came up. I, actually, everything in this extra deck came up. Yeah, everything in the extra deck came up except for Typhon. So. Uh, and, and that's just like matchup wise, right? That's not even uh, like I feel the deck wise. It's just like, oh, I didn't happen to play against a brand of player, right? So it just never came up for me. Uh, but yeah, Zeus was really solid. Again, like being able to go like Merrymaker, Sargus, search in a gate, and then go into Zeus was just like, it's such a strong push without normal summon and like with like such little dedication without using your actual Centurion cards to be able to do that is like crazy. Um, and then lastly for the two links was Grab Control and Little Knight. So the thing that we were trying to figure out like uh, th this one's obvious right like little knight's little knight it's like really good um you can make this with like any of the synchros uh and then like just go into uh what's it called in the little knight to get a banish if you need to or end on it if you need to um gravity control is the weird one so pretty much the what we were figuring out when we were building this deck was like okay if you open up a uh, bike um obviously you go like bike wakaushi and then you go the um big banky banky search the soul guy booster equip go in the excel like summer mac bike and then make baron to uh, make it so that you um, can't get interrupted, so you have like some insulation. But if you opened up with just Wakaushi, um, you actually couldn't get away for to get insulation on your uh, plays, which is really annoying. So we were trying to figure out, solve that problem. And Gravity Controller ended up being the solution to that. 
So um, what actually ends up happening is you go the normal line of like Makaoshi, um, Big Benki, Big Benki effects, uh, grab the, uh, what's it called? The booster, uh, booster effect summon overlay for um, the uh, springins, and then go springins effects, uh, search Regulus, and then you put the Sargus up in the extra monster zone, and then you link off the Sargus um, for the gravity controller. And then that gives you the machine that you need in the graveyard to equip, and then you can bring back the Wakaoshi, so that when Wakaoshi leaves, you can uh, put it in the in the extra deck face up. In the future, if you draw another Wakaoshi and the big bank is still sitting here, you can do like Pendulum Summon back out free level four tuner. That could be relevant. Um, but the main thing is you get the regulars here uh, to be able to insulate your place in the future, like your normal summon um, of like in any of these Centurions, either if you go stand up, any of that stuff. So you get like a nice insulation package being along with a nice Zeus package, which is really nice. The only thing I don't like about this line is that you put fires in your graveyard for Hita, but I think that's like worth it because you're expecting the Calamity of them anyway. So it's like Hita is not really the biggest issue. Um, yeah, so that, that was just cool. I like the gravity controller line. It was just like a good fix for that, for only adding uh, gravity controller because we were, this was already kind of being considered. So just like adding one gravity controller on top of that for a, as loose as an extra deck as this deck has been, um, I think it was fine. It worked out really well. So, um, yeah, that's going to be it for this. I'm not going to show you guys the side deck because it wasn't that important. The only thing I would, like, recommend is, like, more hand traps. Just be, like, like Drolls, I think, is a big one in case you play, like, any, uh, like, more combo decks. Um, and, like, Bistules, I think, are really solid right now. And if you want to play, like, back row removal cards like these, I think are solid. There might be better options, but these are just what I was playing today. Neither of these came up today, so it's just whatever. But um, just, like, options that you can have for the future. So, again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I would really appreciate it if you leave suggestions down below just so that I have more, um, you know, I want to widen my, my view of the Centurion deck more, especially in the future with next set coming out. There's going to be um, a lot more innovation to be had with this deck. So, yeah, I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say about it. So I appreciate your feedback. Please subscribe if you enjoyed. And until then, I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.